Continuing on our uh, collaborative project, since there are a couple of new people here and this is the first video in the series, I'll go over quickly what we've done already. Those of you who've been here before, feel free to drop in and mention things if I forget anything in this summary. What we have currently is just a bunch of asteroids right when the game start and that they all have gravity uh, towards moving to each other. Fly around. Also, you'll notice that Right now, the asteroids all are the same size, but when I ran the game, they were all different. The code we have for that is when we start, we initialize something at random. And so we'll put it at a random position, set it at a, at a random scale between a minimum and maximum, and then set the rigid body mass uh, and its initial speed. Based off of that, there's also gravity, which is a singleton. The singleton right here is from a library, some code that I've written and I use ac across projects, but I'll link a GitHub to it later. But essentially what a singleton does is it allows any object in the scene to be able to reference it directly without having like drag and drop things or use get component or anything else. So like right here, for example, I set this gravity by using like gravity.instance that gets access to the script. And then from then on, I can just access it directly. The way gravity works is it gets a list of all the rigid bodies. So like when it starts, each asteroid adds itself to the list of rigid bodies available. And then in the fixed update, each, so that is on the physics time step, each asteroid tells gravity to apply to itself. And so it sends its own physics into the rigid body. Then for each asteroid, it then looks at all the other asteroids, gets the distance, it determines how much gravity to apply, and then adds a little bit of force in that direction. I think that is everything. If I missed anything, someone let me know. And otherwise, we shall continue. We still have that, that Trello page. Yes, we have a Trello page for tracking the tasks. Unity PDF. Our public repository is already done. So as we make changes, I'll be uploading them onto a public GitHub repository. One, so that anyone else can download it and get the project on their computer. And also if something happens to my computer, it's just available on the cloud. So once I'm done with today, I'll make sure to upload any changes we have. This task is done. Let's see, other things that we, ideas that we had for working on. One was some way of a player controller to be able to move around in the scene. Another was asteroids exploding somehow. And then score. Any thoughts for what we should work on next? When you say a player controller, is that so that the player can move around? Yeah, that'd be the idea. Seems like a reasonable thing to work on next. Yeah, I kind of like that one. One concept I've heard for game design is the spiral of always work on the least fun aspect of the game. And right now, the fact that we can't move is the least fun thing. The thing that is least fun for the player, not the thing that will be least fun to work on. Yes. I guess one other thing I'll add to the Trello, maybe not work on it now, is to clean up these asteroids to have an asteroid spawner rather than just placing a bunch of them there. But I think that can wait, so. Okay. To create a player, I'll, I guess, just start off as a 3D object. Maybe we'll be a sphere to start with. To start with, we can just throw the camera into the sphere and actually disable the mesh render if we're, we're flying around we don't really need to see ourselves okay negative 40 and sure i'll i'll disable it or we could have the camera behind the player's ship a little bit okay and that uh, way you if something was coming at you from the side you'd have a little bit more warning all right it, it is a bit of a trade-off because on the one hand your ship blocks a little bit of your view but let's uh, let's see how that goes so i'll Re-enable the mesh renderer and set the camera back maybe five. Actually, one idea, we could use a material on this and make the player semi-transparent. Mm -hmm. That way yeah. you can you can see where you are, but it's you can also see in front of you. I'll create a new material. And 
call it transparent and apply this to the mesh renderer. I think that's, I think that's been applied. Oh yeah, there's, that, there's our material. And now on this material, I'll set, shrink this down. Now I'm noticing that it's not affecting this at all. And that's because my rendering mode is opaque. So I'm going to set this to transparent and now I can see through it. And as I adjust this more or less, and actually, interestingly, if I set it totally transparent, there's still, still kind of looks like a bubble. So I'll, I'll just make it pretty low on transparency. Is, is there a way, rather than going transparent, is there a way to put an outline? An outline as opposed to a transparency? Yeah, an outline on the asteroids, which renders on a, like a, a higher layer or, or is, is, is a way to block layers in Unity. So it always shows you outlines, even though your ship's over the top of the asteroid. Does that make sense? Ah, okay. To put uh, outlines around the asteroids and the outline would show up over the player, but the even if the asteroid doesn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So in terms of being able to create outlines, effectively the way to do that would be with the shader. So let's see, I'm going to go into an asteroid and look at this. I'm not sure that's going to look particularly good, but I kind of okay. want to see it. Where I would go in here is is look through all the, the shaders and see if it can find one that works. Actually, maybe I would create another 3D object below this, get rid of the collider, and apply the sphere to the and uh, apply the outline to this one so that it, they're both present. And create a another material outline. Probably also call this outline. And then I can start editing the material and see if I can find uh, something that does that. So let's see. There, well, there's UI and unlit, so it's not affected by light. So I can like just focus on this material. I've temporarily deactivated the top level one. This one just looks like a... This, this one's probably planning on having some kind of image applied to it. What about particles? That's probably not a good fit either. Um, what is maybe VR, spatial mapping, wireframe. That looks kind of interesting. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, and occlusion. Oh, that's an interesting one. Occlusion prevents you from, makes it like invisible. Okay, so I have this little wireframe here, and let's see if I put the mesh renderer on this back on. Okay, now I, I can't see the asteroid anymore, so maybe I'll make the outline 0 0.9 by 0 0.9 by 0 0.9, and then we'll see if it's visible. It's looking like no. You want something that's... Maybe it would be possible with like the right layer setup, but actually I'm thinking I'm probably just yeah, not going to end up doing complex. this anyway. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just making the players semi-transparent is probably going to be the uh, quickest way to, to get this sort of effect. And URP with like shader graph or something, you can write your own shader. You're talking like being able to see like in a video game where the enemy walks behind a wall and you can still kind of see a silhouette of the... That's what I was thinking, enemy. yeah, something like that, so yeah. The, but in this case, the asteroid. That setup I was starting to go for is, is probably the way you would go about it. I don't know off the top of my head any of the built-in ones that have that effect. Otherwise, you'd probably be going on the asset store and trying to find the right shader and probably some camera settings as well. Okay, so right now it's going to be pretty much the same, except that we have this chip here that's just kind of observing passively. So now we want to apply a bit of movement to this player. Let's put that asteroid prefab in here with all the other asteroid related things. I think gravity isn't really directly related to an asteroid. So I'm going to just try to keep this organized as I go. And also the transparency is for the player. So I'm going to move that up as well. I'm going to create a new folder for player. Transparency can go in there. So now well, this is going to be some kind of script, so I'll, I'll start with this. I'm just going to call it player, and then I'll delegate downwards uh, as we go from there. 
for our player controls. Any ideas how we go about this? We're just using the old input system, I imagine. Yeah, let's start with that. A little easier to follow. We probably want to use a rigid body for our player, but just to get it moving, we can move the transform. Oh, let's go straight to rigid body. It's not that much more complicated. And we, if we know we're going to need it. So first we're going to need a, uh, a reference to the rigid body. Normally I don't like abbreviations, but uh, rigid body complains uh, as an example, if you use that. So this will be RB. Next, we'll start with just being able to move forward to speed up and slow down. And so for that, we'll need to define a couple of keys that the user can press to make those happen. Key code, just call it forward and backward. Actually, I'm gonna put these on two lines. And they're serialized, shows it in the inspector without making it public and accessible to everything else. So these are both key codes. Now, let's see, oh, are there any errors? That's just a missing semicolon. Okay, so now on the player, I'll attach my script and I'll need a rigid body as well to throw in there. Then we can set our forward and backward keys. I'm left-handed and so I'm gonna use the keyboard up and down. There it is. And then press D to find the down arrow. Just those codes. Get rid of the excess stuff. So now I guess we'll be using the update loop to make sure we're checking every single frame. So we could say if input dot get key, this is going to be continuous, not just when we press down or when we press up, just get key is, is good. So if get key forward, then this will be where we move forward. So RB dot add force. Well, we probably want to do the rigid body stuff and fixed update. So we might need to just cast the input into like a vector two or a vector three. Uh, okay. So just for now, just track what direction we're going and then in fixed update, apply it. Okay. Mm -hmm. In that case, vector three, I'll just set a direction here. And... Input. Oh yeah. In, uh, input. Yeah. I guess that would be accurate. And actually maybe we ha we're pressing multiple keys at once. So we can actually make use of this by adding them together. So at the beginning of update, we can say input equals vector 3.0 to clear it from whatever's in there. And then here we can say input plus equals transform dot forward because which way is forward is going to depend on how you're rotated. Get key backward. And, the, and then in this case, input plus equals transform dot. It's just back. And then so it's a fixed update. And in this case, we'll apply whatever input we have towards uh, a force, rb dot add force. And so the arguments for add force, I think it's what force you're applying. So it's going to be direction and the magnitude. So we have our input and we want to be able to control that. And maybe I'll call this engine strength. Uh, so we have our input times our, actually, I want to flip these around times input. And that might, I think might be all. There's an option to be able to put in a force mode. But the default one, I think, will be what we want. Okay, it looks like a spelling error. Transform. Is it backward? Oh, uh, I we think... Minus forward. Yeah, I have to just go with minus forward. Is there nothing called backward? Correct. So the vector 3 has a forward and back but transform only has forward up right. And then you have to use the negatives to go the other directions. Uh, interesting. Uh, that seems kind of lazy on the part of someone because that would take like a few seconds for Unity to add. They wouldn't even have to change the internal logic. Okay, so now let's see if I'm pressing forward and back, nothing. Oh, uh, my engine strength is zero. So let's turn this up a bit. I don't know what the correct number is, but we'll find out. Okay, that's uh, pretty fast. Maybe I'll shrink this down to 10. That's pretty good. And holding down the key accelerates you? Yes. Maybe we yeah. can add like a, 
push the space bar or hold down on like the left control or something that it gives you a quick boost. So temporary but, increase engine strength? Yeah, basically it would just like maybe multiply the force by like 1.2 or something small just to give you a little bit faster, but eventually we could probably play with it so that it only works for a second, you know, just long enough to get you out of the way of an asteroid or something. Okay, so basically a li having a little bit of control over speed by having a fast and a slow mode. Yeah, okay. like a sprint kind of. Yeah, I okay. think that'd be fun. Sure. Let's do that. Eyes field. And let's see how we can think of this as a multiplier or as a different speed. If we make it a multiplier, we can just always have it at one and then change it when they're holding the button down and then always just multiply it by the multiplier. Ah, okay. Uh, so let's... Fixed update. Okay. Uh, all right. So have a boost multiplier right here, and I'll give it a default value of five. Next, we'll need some kind of key. We'll have to know whether the player's pressing the key or not. Key code boost equal, and I'll just give it a, a default value right there. Great. So we have our strength and our multiplier. Then I'll just maybe have a Boolean and for boost applied. So we can just get all the key codes in the input here. So input dot get key. Actually, this one doesn't need an if statement. We can just say boost applied equals input dot get key. Uh, boost. Okay. I think the boost applied is has a spelling issue and update. Yes, it does. Okay. Would it be better to uh, specify the boost key in the inspector the same way you did the forward and backward key? In the code, the boost key is set by default and forward and backward aren't. Oh, uh, this is, I mean, I could overwrite it in the inspector in any case. So I mean, oh. I, yeah, I could, I could give uh, default values to the other ones. In fact, I think I'll, maybe I'll do that right now. I'll say kiko.up arrow, kiko.down arrow. So this, these default values are not actually going to control what's here. I can put anything in this and it's, and what's in the code isn't going to matter. Where that, that default value takes effect is whenever I apply this component to something, it'll just start out with there without me having to bring up the drop down. Or if That's you reset what... the component, it'll revert it yeah. back to the... Yeah. So it's a bit of a time saver. Uh, and also it's kind of a suggestion to a designer as to what it ought to be by default. Okay, so now we have a way of having the boost applied. Get rid of the using statements until I need them. Next, we'll be wanting to change the engine strength based on whether this boost is applied. But I don't want to change this number because this is like a setting. So I can maybe have another, I'll just have a temporary variable. Call this, we call this acceleration. Or actually, I'll just call it force. Force magnitude is a little bit more specific. And this is going to be one of two things. So this is, I like to use a ternary. So I can say boost applied, the question mark. This is kind of like the equivalent of having an if, if and an else. And if the boost is applied, it's engine strength times the boost multiplier. Otherwise, it's just the engine strength. Then I can take this and use that instead of the engine strength. So now that we're applying a calculated value. So what should happen now is I can go forward and backward as before, and the effect is kind of subtle. But if I hold space bar, then I can accelerate and decelerate pretty quickly, which it looks like I am. One control idea that I think I actually like uh, a lot, even though it isn't particularly realistic, is having a key that you can press that moves your speed towards zero, kind of acts like a brake. And this is really nice for when you're just like lost track of which way you're going and things are just kind of going crazy. So maybe add that as well. Your etheric anchor. Yeah. So break and maybe I'll make this key code dot. B. And then we'll get another weird break applied. And this will be very similar to this, this whole process. 
And if you put the break applied one above boost applied, we can do boost applied equals input dot get key boost and not break applied. That way, when you push that button, that it overrides your boost. Ah, okay. So instead of adding a force here, that, that would only be if the, the brake is applied or it, that if the brake is not applied. If I split this up and say var force equals this, put that on a new line, then if I calculate the brake strength, then I'd be able to just put something else inside of force, and then this line still works the same way. So it's a, a little bit less branching. In fact, maybe I can put that right here if it's not too much. Break applied. And so this will be the negative case. And the positive case would be, so let's see how a break would work is I guess just applying force in the opposite direction that you're currently moving. Force would be, actually it's still force magnitude times negative RB dot velocity, I think. So it's like the same amount of force, but just opposite direction of wherever you're going. Now, one problem is this will oscillate when you get close to zero and we could put more work into it. This could get complicated. So I'm gonna just instead well, have a- Force magnitude doesn't seem right. Oh, oh, oh I see that that's, a, that's effectively a constant anyway. Just so this doesn't get too complicated, I'm gonna put this here and then I can say get brake force. While you're at, on line 27, you're looking at the boost key for the brake instead of the brake key. Good catch. All right. So well, I guess one thing that I'll just add here is when I'm braking, I don't want the force magnitude to be greater than the magnitude of the current velocity. Do you want to just have the brake force be something like 0.9 times minus RB dot velocity? So the faster you're going, the harder your brakes work. Ah, okay. You could have something like 0 0.5 or maybe even more than that. This is something that's only going to be... For from zero to one. Uh, so I can say like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll leave that force magnitude ar argument in there in case we, this is a dead end. And I'll put this at like 0.9. So now I start going forward and then I press B. Oh, that's interesting. I can get knocked and started rolling and that's really kind of nauseating. So we'll figure out how to deal with that in a little bit. For now, I'm just going to freeze rotation so I don't get go spinning. Maybe we want that, but on a, it's harder to see what's going on. So now I hit the brake, then my velocity should stop moving. Oh, but it's a times a 0.9, so it's never going to reach zero. And my X and Y somehow got got to really extreme values. So I'm just going to start over. So I'm going backwards and forwards. Got some press B and it's kind of looking like I'm not moving very fast now. Yeah, I'd say that's roughly working. I'll maybe wait till it's, um, we're using it more, and then I can try to find ways to make it snappier. But yeah, it's, I'd say it's at least not totally out of control now. I'll get rid of that. Great. So that's some forward and backward motion. Have we committed? Uh, no, we have not. Now, this, this that might be a good time for this. Added player with forward back motion. Yeah, good to do that at the, at the very least at the end of each session, but at the most, whenever there's some discrete point that hasn't some visible addition that doesn't have a bunch of console errors, which we are at. So what's next for design? We got some forward and backwards motion. Rotation. Rotation, Rotation would be pretty good. Drawing at least. 
Yeah, so how should that be done? WASD feels natural to me. Okay, so to be able to press keys to rotate. Some games use like mouse movement and you have like direct control. Mm -hmm. But I guess the keyboard based would get more of like an accelerating kind of feel, which would be difficult to use, but it might be interesting aspect of using that as part of the skill. Any thoughts? Is, is this going to be on a plane for the player or is it going to be 3D space for them to move around? 3D. So if we're just, we're just using up, down, left, right, should left and right pan and rotate at the same time? We have up and down arrow keys to accelerate and decelerate. So this would be for just yeah rotating the, the ship up, down, left, right. Could give it six degrees of freedom, like the old descent or overload, if anybody played those. That also allows for roll as well? Yeah, yeah. You, could, you could rotate on any axis and translate on any axis. Okay. They end up being six keys for rotate and six keys for movement. That's that an interesting. By a fancy joystick. Yeah. Okay. That could be pretty interesting. You'd be using like both hands yeah. for the things. Throttle. Like a pitch and yaw. All right. If we're going to do that, why don't we extend out the movement to include up, down, left, right, forward, back as well. And then, then we'll bring in some rotation. But that should be fairly quick since it's mostly just copy paste. Actually, the arrow keys are not going to work anymore. This left right, up, down. And then for maybe for the keys, I'll use Q, W, E, A, S, D for the rotation and U, I, O, J, K, L for the movement. Forward, I'll go with, I can always change them. Okay. And then left and right, maybe have J and L. Yeah, J and L, L, and then up and down, I guess. Uh, U and L, maybe? And this way, all your translation is with your right hand and all your rotation is with the left hand. Yeah, that's that's the idea. So U and what for down? O, because okay. you can reach all of this without moving your hand. All right. So yeah, the, the middle is forward and back. And then if you go like upwards, you have left, right for forward, back, up, down. And I want to make sure that those all get applied. I think forward and backward are still going to be up and down arrow. I want to change those now. I and K. I went past it. There it is. K. And we'll just extend this. This would be forward, back, up, down. You have transform that up and down is negative transform dot up. And then we do the same thing for left. Actually, I'll go right and then left. So this is transform dot right and negative transform dot right. Since all of this is being added together already, then I don't need to change anything inside of my fixed update. Okay, let's see how this feels. Forward and back, still working the same as before. Now I'm going up, now I'm down, left, and right. Okay, I, I can tell this is going to be tricky to control, but maybe that's an okay thing. So can we try doing a couple keys at the same time so we can see, if, you know, like trying to go up and left or... Sure, let's see. Well, I'm going to go up and a forward and left. Yeah. Yeah, it's work. I, I'm going two of those and yeah. say it's working. It's very easy to get off the edge of the screen here, though. I guess break helps. With... Actually, this is a place where break is really helpful. If I press uh, three keys at once and I go in some different direction, then this helps uh, get back on track. So is this still, are we still trying to make a 3D version of asteroids? That's the idea. Okay, so. Although we're diverged from there as we feel like it. Okay. Okay, let's get some rotation in here. 
and see how that feels. I'll start with the Y axis. You may want to experiment around with different key code combinations for some of these things. I guess we'll call this, we're rotating on the Y axis. What, what is, there's, there's pitch, roll, and yaw. I forget which is which. Pretty pitch sure. Is up and down, or there's, you know, there's, that's pitch. Roll is like that. The, okay, and so ball. yaw is the one on the Y axis. Yeah. I'll call this yaw positive and yaw negative. And these will be on the W and S. Pitch, neg pitch positive, pitch negative, roll positive, roll negative. Now, one thing, since I already had some problems tracking which one was which, just in, in coming up with these, this is a good place to use a tooltip. This would be rotation on the Y axis. And, and pitch was on the X axis. And roll is on the Z axis. Oh, and also want to enter in some default key codes. Pitch will be Q and A, and then the roll will be E and D. I would argue for consistence with the others, the yaw should be A and D. Okay. And I don't know which one is which. But yeah, I agree. The, sure. The pitch should be W and S. And then the roll should be Q and E. Q and E. Next, we're going to probably going to have something similar like that in update. But now input doesn't really make sense as a term anymore because we have our movement input and our rotation input. So I'm going to rename this. Is there an option to rename all instances? Refactor, try refactor, rename. Ah, refactor, rename. So I'll call this move, move input. Okay. And search and comments. Okay. And I don't need the, that. Boom. Change that. And so now I'll have another vector three for rotation input. And that's going to work pretty much like this. So where you have a rotation input equals vector three dot zero. And then we go through all of these. So the right rotation input to vector 3.0 every frame, is that going to pop us right back to a zero rotation when we release a key? This is just tracking the input. When we actually apply, it's in fixed update where we're going to oh, yeah, look yeah, at yeah. the cumulative thing and yeah, apply. Makes, okay, I got gotcha. you. Now it's going to be this rotation input uh, for all of these. Normally, alarm bells go off for me with this much cut and paste, but since it's a very strict number of things, I think it, it's fine. Pitch positive, pitch negative, and I'll change the transform, figure out what that's going to be next. And then this is, I guess, yaw positive, yaw negative, then roll positive, and roll negative. Okay. We're not going to be basing it off of the transform dot forward anymore. We're just going to plug that in directly. Pitch is on the X axis. I think it's just saying vector three dot right. So this will be a one zero zero. So I'll add a, it'll just add a one to X. And now I can do the same thing like that. And I think since I can just for readability rather than having plus minus, I can actually say vector three dot left. Next for yaw, it'll be the same thing. Let's see, what was yaw? That was Y axis. So I can say vector three dot up. And this will be plus equals vector three dot down. 
roll, that's going to be Z. So vector three dot forward and vector three dot back. If I'm pressing the pitch positive and roll negative, I would end up getting one, zero, negative one. And I would just be kind of storing that number for the, the fixed update to then apply some rotations. Next, you need to change the roll negative to add the vector three. This is still says negative. Ah, yes, yeah. that is a something missing. Great. So now in my fixed updates, we already hit the movement there. This is called, let's put a comment here. I guess ultimately what we're going to need is some RB dot add uh, rotation, which I guess add torque is a rotational force. And actually, I want to look up what the unity add torque. This will probably be the last thing we get to today. Okay, so we have a vector three for what the torque is, and then the force mode as an optional kind of thing. And the force mode dot force is continuous mass, so that, that works well. So we can basically say that it is the rotation input. Uh, but again, like before, we're going to want some control over how strong that is. So there'll be another variable, serialized field, float, rotation strength. And for now, I'll just say it's one. And so rotation strength times rotation input. And I think that is all. We'll use this break force kind of thing as well. But let's make sure that the rotation is working first. Okay. So let's see. So I'm pressing the keys and I'm seeing my rotation is not changing at all. Make sure my rotation strength is one. I don't think upping that is gonna have any effect. But yeah, okay, so something is not working. Oh, one bit of cleanup I think I'm gonna get is oh, um breaking this up, but uh, yeah. I think it's the rigid body. You locked the rotation earlier. Ah, of the, the bug. yeah. Good point. Good yeah, and because we're using add torque rather than changing the rotation directly, then the freezing would matter. All right. So that is turning very fast, uh, even at just a rotation strength of one. That might actually be okay. But one thing, this would definitely be a place where I'd yeah, want to have some kind of break in here. Also, these keys are backwards from what I'm expecting. So uh, we'll switch those around. Make this D, and this one A. Okay, verify that, and then I'll see that the that the other ones work. Oh, and then I'll um, make sure to, yeah, so that goes right, this goes left. Now let's see, up and down. These are also kind of reversed from where I'm expecting, just based on where it is. And let's see, then Q and E. Okay, that's going to be really nauseating, I'm sure. Put this in VR next. That's very descent, though. That's kind of cool. Yeah, okay, so the... Yeah, that one is working as expected. So uh, I'll just flip the pitch around, S, and this will be W. One thing I want to do just to make it easier to find all this stuff is split up these key codes. So I'll say this is header for movement. This is a header for references. And this as a header for rotation. I'll just call this other for now. So now when I bring that up, we have these little gaps for each of these sections of controls. It is nine o'clock now, so I think I'm going to end it there. But one thing that I'm going to just say, put as a little note here is apply breaking to rotation. I can feel already it's very easy to get spitting out of control.
that and, and when you're going at a certain speed you don't even know which direction you're going anymore i'll finish by a applying a commit player rotation we have our movement controls are basically there and breaking for rotation actually i can be a little bit more satisfying movement and rotation break movement break rotation is is not done